okay so solar thermal fluids solar thermal fluids in sense the heat transfer fluids which is uh, used in the solar collector system which is uh, circulated inside the collector system and also in the storage system both these uh, fluids are going to be seen so there are <coughs> there are uh, six to five to six uh, fluids that are commonly used in a solar uh, heating system or uh, liquid systems or solar refrigeration systems so i will narrate each uh, each one and i will say what are the properties how to select the heat transfer fluid and uh, what are its advantages and uh, disadvantages so the word file or pdf file i will attach in your uh, teams login so that you can take and also the notes for unit one also i will attach after this session and you may be going through it and uh, i hope you will go through it and ready for the assessment test so solar thermal fluids uh, first is oil based water based molten salts air refrigerants silicons so oil based may be terminal oil or any oil related one water based is uh, water fluid and uh, water with some glycol mixtures that is water based molten salts which is used for uh, higher temperatures in uh, as we have seen concentrated solar power system that is uh, power tower that is concentrated uh, heliostat system so for that molten salts is used and the air you know is a simple uh, available atmospheric air which is used in a system for a flat plate collector system or a operator tube collector system which is uh, used as it is in the atmosphere or it is uh, pressurized and used in the system so next is refrigerants refrigerants is commonly used in uh, uh, refrigeration systems so like in your uh, household uh, air compressed uh, vcr system or your uh, uh, food refrigeration systems like our domestic fridge which uses uh, refrigerant so that is refrigerants then silicons silicons is other type of uh, heat transfer fluid which is used as a uh, heat absorbing fluid so we come to next so what are the properties and how to select this criteria selection criteria for this heat transfer fluids so our solar thermal fluids so first property is maximum temperature so what is maximum temperature the maximum temperature is the highest temperature that the fluid can gain after that the fluid becomes decomposed or it may not uh, it may be in a position not uh, able to accept the heat so this is maximum temperature so where will be the hottest parts in a system it may be in a uh, in a center of the absorbing tube or in a auxiliary heater or boiler so there are the, there are hottest parts in the system so hottest parts of a system or where the maximum temperature is most probable and therefore must be careful designed for those key points in the system so maximum to you when you take this uh, heat transfer fluid or solar thermal fluid for a particular process you should know about the maximum temperature of that particular fluid so as to see the safety concerns of the system and also the maintenance of the system with respect to this uh, temperature so this is maximum temperature freezing temperature what is freezing temperature is the uh, coldest temperature before the fluids changes phase into a solid so that is first one you have seen maximum temperature that is increase in temperature this is a uh, lowest temperature of the fluid where the fluid changes its phase to the solid Uh, when it uh, becomes solid or with any phase change you use a pump of particular uh, uh, phase for a particular phase. in fact you use water pump uh, uh, in a system you pump the water inside the system to circulate in the system and to get heated up but when it is uh, freezed up what will happen 
it will become uh, the phase change so in that particular system it cannot the t transfer fluid is uh, difficult to pump or it may it should be stopped so when it uh, becomes phase change what will happen it will cause a potential damage to the system components so in the case of each fluid uh, additional properties such as expansion of the fluid when it freezes are important so when it freezes also the expansion of fluid also is to be seen so these are the conditions uh, you have to see before selecting the uh, heat transfer fluid one is maximum temperature and another one is freezing temperature in fact you have to see the properties of the fluid before choosing this uh, for a particular process so first two is maximum temperature and next is freezing temperature third one is density so density is a thermodynamical property you know as you know is density is mass per unit volume so for a per unit volume uh, what is the mass present in this in the particular medium or any solid density is a thermodynamic property it can be uh, applicable to a solid or liquid or any any medium so density is a mass per unit volume so and it is a temperature dependent property when temperature rises density may vary so is so for example if you using uh, any fluid when you heat up the density will change for example if you use a hydrocarbon oil which has a 30% decrease in density when increased from 25 degrees to 390 degrees centigrade so for an hydrocarbon oil uh, there is a decrease in density with respect to temperature so that uh, property is also an important parameter to be seen for selecting the solar thermal fluids for a particular process next is uh, steam pressure so when you are using water uh, or air with respect to temperature it may be change to when you heat that part to a particular point after the temperature it may become steam so for uh, for for uh, maintaining the uh, temperature and pressure of the particular fluid you may uh, you may require necessary components so for this particular uh, fluid you have to know the steam pressure at what point it changes its phase to the gaseous medium so at higher pressures the temperature at which the heat transfer fluid changes phase from a liquid to gas is also higher so when you see a system if you use water after 100 degree centigrade it may be converted to steam in a particular system so you if you want to produce steam you have to have a necessary components for that to handle that particular steam or else the say you have to maintain the safety precautions it will lead to a damaging of the system if you have if you do not have the particular components for maintaining the steam pressure it will damage all the system components so steam pressure is also an important parameter in selecting the uh, or knowing the particular uh, solar thermal fluid next is specific heat specific heat is a uh, measured in units of energy per mass temperature so you have seen in the unit it is joule per kg kelvin so specific heat of water is 4.187 kilojoule per kg kelvin so it is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of the heat transfer fluid per unit mass as uh, defined so if you want to raise uh, the energy of the fluid for a particular uh, mass and the temperature what is the energy required so that you can transfer the heat to the fluid so for example if a fluid has a 2300 kilojoule per kg kelvin the fluid would require to supply of 2300 kilojoule of energy to raise 1 kg of fluid by 1 degree so this parameter is also useful to know the uh, correct uh, heat transfer sir? fluid or solar thermal fluid yes the slide is a share yes. putting sir இல்ல ஸ்லைடு இல்ல நான் உங்களுக்கு நரேட் பண்ணலாம் நான் சொன்ன முதல்ல நீங்க ஸ்டார்டிங்ல இல்லையா இல்ல சார் இல்ல ஸ்லைட் ஷேர் பண்ணலாம் இல்ல 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 உங்களுக்கு மட்டும் வரல நினைச்சிட்டீங்களோ ஆ சார் 
ஹலோ எஸ் சார் ஆமாம் சார் எனக்கு கூட வரல நினைச்சேன் சார் இல்லை இல்லை நான் வந்து நிறைய தான் பண்ணுறேன் ஸோ ஐ வில் ஆஃப்டர் தட் ஐ வில் ஷேர் த நோட்ஸ் ஃபார் யூ ஓகே 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 நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் திஸ் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் ஹீட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ ஏ இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் பேராமீட்டர் தட் ஷுட் பி நோட் பிஃபோர் செலக்டிங் த ஹீட் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் ஃபுயூட் ஆர் சோலார் தெர்மல் ஃபுயூட் ஸோ நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் என்தால்பி என்தால்பி இஸ் அ மெஷர் ஆஃப் யூனிட்ஸ் ஆஃப் எனர்ஜி பர் கேஜி so the amount of energy contained in the fluid under specific conditions such as temperature so what is the energy contained in a particular fluid with respect to its uh, mass so joule per kg next is viscosity viscosity is a fluid resistance to shear stress so essentially is required to move the fluid in environment viscosity can then create பாரமீட்டர் வாட்டேஜஸ் <laughs> so for air it will not freeze or boil and it is not non corrosive but it tend to tends to easily leak from the system so this is a of air next is water so water is a non toxic and inexpensive fluid with a high viscosity and very low viscosity easily even low viscosity it is easy to Um, but it has a boiling point and a high freezing point. These are the advantages of the it is expensive, high specific viscosity and uh, which leads to less pumping power. But the disadvantages are low boiling point and high freezing point. But uh, water, it is uh, non-corrosive, but uh, if you if you not uh, take steps to maintain the pH of the uh, water, it will be it will be it will may be acid it may be or alkalinity so water mineral content can cause mineral electric tubing and system plumbing so when the salt content of the water will be if you use a high salt content water it will make the pumping system and the pipes which are using for மிக்சர் <laughs> a percentage of water in a current mixture so a 50 50 mixture or 60 40 mixture can be used in a common system so ethylene and propylene glycol are anti so ethylene and propylene are used as glycol and water is also added in the mixture so it is a anti freeze it has anti freeze property so what is anti freeze so when you see anti freeze uh, in a system anti freeze uh, fluids uh, the fluid which is flowing inside the system uh, the solar available to the system uh, the free so it does not allow the uh, to 
uh, freeze when uh, heat is not available. So that uh, the freezing of food is so what will happen when no antibodies will be there when uh, operation of the system is uh, stopped? So it will freeze and it will when you again start the operation, the fluid inside the system will be in the state of uh, solid. So you cannot pump, pump the fluid and also you cannot take the amount of heat trans heat extraction from the system. So this is anti freeze. So anti freeze also should be the level should be also in the so that it's uh, properly maintained. So this is the advantage mixtures. So next is hydrocarbon oils. So hydrocarbon oils have a higher viscosity and lower specific heat than water. So the energy required to pump this is high. High viscosity is a Oils are relatively easy. But between three, between... sorry. So why is rumba breakers? Or or nimshma? Okay, clear. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Vitta vitta abdiye breakers, sir. Purila. Break I break I cake, sir. So, ipa da break acha, munadiye break acha. Or fast or 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 nimshma, sir. Okay, so hydrocarbon oils, uh, next is hydrocarbon oils, which has higher viscosity and lower specific heat than water. Yes, sir. Okay, so the, the water, when we compare to water, hydrocarbon oil has a higher viscosity and lower specific heat than water. So, which uh, tends to have less uh, energy for operation of pump. So, so the advantages are uh, high, relatively inexpensive, and have a low freezing point. So, the basic uh, there are three types of hydrocarbon oils, which are paraffin and uh, paraffin synthetic and uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. So, each uh, each uh, hydrocarbon oil is has its own own advantages. First one is uh, synthetic hydrocarbons where it is high, relatively non-toxic and require less maintenance. Paraffin hydrocarbons, which has a wider temperature range between its freezing point and the boiling point, but it is highly toxic. So the maintenance is high here. So aromatic oils are uh, least viscous in the hydrocarbon oils. So these are hydrocarbon oils. And next is refrigerant fluids. So refrigerant fluids, as I said, it is used in the refrigerators and air conditionings, air conditioners and heat pump. Its boiling point as uh, very low and has high heat capacity. So it uh, it enables to transfer heat within a certain uh, volume of the uh, volume of the refrigerant. So uh, it can transfer high amount of heat with res less with less uh, volume of refrigerant. So refrigerants respond quickly to solar heat, making them more effectively on cloudy days. So you have a current technology such as refrigerant solar heaters, water heaters, where when there is cloudy season, uh, cloudy days, it can uh, take uh, the amount of heat from ambient and it can transfer the heat to the application side. Thus, that uh, uh, can be seen in the next uh, unit. We will explain detail about that uh, system. So this is refrigerant uh, phase change. Next is silicons. Silicons have a low freezing point and has a high boiling point. They are non-corrosive, long and uh, long lasting. That is, uh, lifetime of the uh, fluid is uh, very long because silicons have a high viscosity and low heat capacity. They require more energy 
to pump silicons are also easily leakable even though microscopic holes in a solar loop so it is easily leaked in a system because uh, the density it's a re, uh, very uh, equal to our air so it is uh, easily leaked in the system this is a disadvantages so we come to the end of the first unit i will uh, share this uh, uh, notes to your uh, ms teams uh, channel so you can see the notes so we come to the end of the first unit so i will uh, give you a, give you a problem so that i can analyze you what uh, you have taken from first unit so can you note the problem as i say as i say yes sir a solar flat plate collector a solar flat plate collector if anything is not understood please interrupt me in between a solar flat plate collector a solar flat flat plate collector integrated with sensible thermal energy storage a solar flat plate collector integrated with sensible thermal energy storage integrated with sensible thermal energy storage is to be installed is to be installed for a household purpose a solar flat plate collector integrated with sensible thermal energy storage is to be installed for a household purpose have you all noted the first line of the problem yes sir okay next line calculate the amount of calculate the amount of calculate the amount of useful heat gained calculate the amount of useful heat gain by the collector so this is the first one you have to calculate next one is a uh, volume of heat transfer fluid that is water volume of heat transfer fluid that is water next is so first one you have to calculate is useful heat gain by the collector second one is volume of heat transfer fluid water third one is instantaneous collector efficiency instantaneous collector efficiency third one is instantaneous collector efficiency and overall collector efficiency so these are the uh, these are the data you have to calculate so the data uh, so the data for the problem are first data is absorber plate temperature absorber plate temperature 69 degree centigrade absorber plate temperature 69 degree centigrade glass temperature 45 degree centigrade glass temperature 45 degree centigrade ambient temperature 20 degree centigrade ambient temperature 20 degree centigrade next is insulation thickness 6 cm insulation thickness 6 cm thermal conductivity of insulation thermal conductivity of insulation 0.04 watt per meter degree centigrade thermal conductivity of insulation 
equal to 0.04 watt per meter degree centigrade. Air space between glass and plate, 7.5 centimeter. Air space between glass and plate, 7.5 centimeter. Next is emissivity of glass and observer. Emissivity of glass and observer equal to 0 0.88 and 0 0.95. 0 0.88 and 0 0.95. Emissivity of glass and observer equal to 0 0.88 and 0 0.95. Area of the collector, 1 meter square. Area of the collector, 1 meter square. Average solar radiation. Average solar radiation equal to 700 watt per meter square. Average solar radiation equal to 700 watt per meter square. Average solar radiation equal to 700 watt per meter square. Transmittivity in the collector. Transmittivity of the glass is 0.95. Transmittivity that is tau. Tau equal to 0.95. Then absorbivity alpha that is 0.85. Transmivity is 0.95. Absorbivity equal to 0.85. Then uh, storage tank temperature at the end is uh, that is uh, outlet of the fluid storage tank temperature is 60 degree centigrade. Outlet fluid. Temperature in the storage tank is 50 degrees centigrade and the initial uh, fluid temperature in the tank is 30 degree centigrade. So with this uh, data, you calculate uh, the collector useful heat gained in the collector, volume of water required, collector efficiency, instantaneous collector efficiency and overall collector efficiency. And uh, you may proceed with this problem. First, what you should do is you should find the yeah yes. Hey, inlet temperature also okay. forty. Inlet temperature thirty degree centigrade. Okay. So what you should do is uh, you should uh, first calculate the overall heat loss coefficient of the collector. So for that you know how to calculate. So using uh, the Top loss and uh, uh, bottom loss. So they have given thickness and insulation. So from that, uh, you can calculate top loss and bottom loss and then add it to you get uh, overall heat loss coefficient. And then you can find a uh, useful heat collected by the collector with the formula QU and uh, instantaneous collector efficiency that is also given and overall efficiency of the collector. Then cal how you should be you will calculate the HTF required is equate the collect useful heat gained by the collector. So that is the available energy to the storage tank. So equate to the storage tank. So what you know is storage tank. You know the storage tank uh, what is the energy stored. So we have seen in last class uh, rho into V into Cp into the temperature difference inlet and outlet. So in that you can calculate the volume of the HDF required. So you can proceed with the problem. If you have any doubts you can ask me. So today attendance is all present I guess. So if you have any doubts in the first unit, you can also ask me in simultaneously when you are solving the problem. So from Thursday onwards, we will see the second unit.
ஐ திங்க் யூர் செகண்ட் சாரி அசஸ்மெண்ட் டெஸ்ட் ஃபார் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டேர்ம் இஸ் ஃப்ரம் டுவெண்ட்டி சிக்ஸ்த் ஆஃப் திஸ் மந்த் ஐ கெஸ் தட் டேட் இஸ் ஸ்டார்டிங் ஃப்ரம் நெக்ஸ்ட் மந்த் ஒன்ட்ரீட் next uh, what i am teaching that uh, half the unit i will cover i guess or whatever uh, up to which i teach you can keep it for uh, the portion for some assessment one so ungalku rendu assessment test dana yes sir rendu okay
Is everyone solving the problem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you given any feedback for previous previous uh, semester in RCC or in mechanical department? No, sir. Okay, you continue to solve that problem. So you keep the solved problem and get me in next class. So we may discuss the problem for the correct answers. So can you wind up the class or we have so many doubts? No doubt. Sir. Okay, so is this uh, speed is okay, or you want the uh, low speed, or you want to cover any suggestions? No, yes, sir. Okay. It's, it's okay, okay for you guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Actually, that uh, design of a uh, storage tank is there now. So in that uh, part only you have to that is a small uh, introduction so what i took is the small introduction for you guys the major major will come in uh, water storage tanks so you may not uh, worry about the uh, pcms or uh, that uh, any solid medium storage so we can we can see if that comes also it is uh, the formula is available and uh, you can uh, go through okay i will upload the notes and uh, and also you may go through the for first unit so okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir. thank you sir. thank you